Hello, this is Tony Heller from RealClimateScience.com. The BBC writes some really awful climate articles, but this one may be the worst one ever. Climate change, hurricanes to expand into more populated regions. Climate change will expand the range of tropical cyclones, making millions more people vulnerable to these devastating storms, a new study says. At present, the cyclones, or hurricanes as they're known, are mainly confined to the tropical regions north and south of the equator. But researchers say that rising temperatures will allow these weather events to form in the mid-latitudes. This area includes cities such as New York, Beijing, Boston, and Tokyo. Now let's take a look and see if these claims make any sense. This is a map of all known tropical cyclone tracks since the year 1850. Most of them pass through the mid-latitudes and almost none of them pass near the equator. Cyclones can't exist near the equator because there's no Coriolis force. Coriolis force is caused by the rotation of the Earth and its opposite in the northern and southern hemispheres. Thus, there's no way for a cyclone to form near the equator. This is very basic atmospheric science and the BBC got it exactly backwards. Now let's look at their claim that hurricanes will expand into New York, Beijing, Boston, and Tokyo. The most intense hurricane ever to hit the northeastern U.S. occurred 200 years ago in 1821. It would have completely destroyed Lower Manhattan, except for the fact that it came in at low tide. The 1821 storm left communities, farms, and churches in ruins from North Carolina to New Hampshire. And a few days later in 1821, there was a terrible tornado outbreak in New Hampshire and Massachusetts. Massachusetts was also hit by a catastrophic hurricane on July 28, 1748. The summer of 1815 was remarkable for exceptionally violent and disastrous storms all along the Atlantic coast. The most famous of these was the Great Storm at Providence, Rhode Island on September 23, 1815. Providence was again hit by a tremendous hurricane during September of 1938. The 1938 storm was the largest known storm to hit the northeastern U.S. My mother remembered looking out the window of her home in Brooklyn and seeing trees bent all the way over double to the ground. Providence was 12 feet deep in water and 250 people died in that area. The total storm toll was 462. New England hasn't been hit by a major hurricane since 1954, but during the summer of 1954, they were hit by two within two weeks. Hurricane Carol hit on September 1st, 1954, and then Hurricane Edna hit 10 days later. Hurricane Carol toppled the belfry at the Old North Church in Boston, where Paul Revere started his ride. But the BBC says that future hurricanes in Boston will be due to climate change. Later in 1954, Hurricane Hazel became the deadliest hurricane in Canada's history, striking Toronto. Hazel also devastated much of the United States on its way to Canada. The BBC also said that cyclones would be something new for Tokyo. My beautiful wife Kyrie is from Tokyo. She plotted this graph of land-falling typhoons in Japan since 1951. There hasn't been any trend over the last 70 years, and last year during 2020, they didn't have any typhoons at all. In 1934, a typhoon hit the Tokyo area with winds about 200 miles per hour. The 1934 typhoon killed more than 3,000 people. Tokyo also had catastrophic typhoons in 1949 and 1958. Tokyo had a deadly typhoon during April 1925, a few weeks after the deadliest tornado on record in the United States. During 1919, a typhoon in China killed 3,000 people. And three years later, 1922, another typhoon killed 100,000 people. This article from the BBC got everything exactly backwards. But to be fair, there's some pretty close runner-ups to this awful journalism. In Al Gore's book, An Inconvenient Truth, he photoshopped a cyclone into the wrong hemisphere. He put a southern hemisphere cyclone with clockwise circulation over Florida. In the northern hemisphere, cyclones rotate counterclockwise. Al Gore won the Nobel Prize without even knowing the basics of atmospheric science. Another close runner-up was this story from five years ago. Unprecedented scientists declare global climate emergency after jet stream crosses the equator. Canadian climate academic Paul Beckwith made a 15-minute long video about this climate emergency. He thought that this line right here was the jet stream crossing the equator. 
But it wasn't. The Southern Hemisphere jet was here and the Northern Hemisphere jet was here. The jet stream can't really cross the equator because of the opposite rotation of pressure systems in the different hemispheres. There is some atmospheric mixing along the equator, but it's not caused by the jet stream. Kurt Eichenwald tweeted, Good God, northern jet stream just crossed the equator, and ignorant climate change deniers have no idea what I mean or why it's terrifying. But leading climate alarmist Jennifer Francis from Rutgers weighed in and said it was no big deal, and it didn't even happen. She also said that what they thought they saw was the opposite of what global warming theory would predict. Paul Beckwith declared a global climate emergency over his imaginary jet stream crossing, and he also said the Arctic would be ice-free in 2013. The BBC has a policy of censoring climate misinformation, which is pretty much all that they print. I haven't seen an accurate story about climate from the BBC in many years. Toto wonders how people who couldn't pass elementary school science get to be climate writers at the BBC. You can visit Toto, Kyrie, and Caesar on the web at realclimatescience.com.